Greetings, my fellow bookworms. Welcome back to Bookworm History. My name is Dan. Now, today on the docket, we've got a lot to talk about. We're going to cover three specific things. One, we're going to talk about what's referred to as the Waldseemuller map. Two, we're going to talk about the book that was published in conjunction with the Waldseemuller map, first in 1507. The book is called The Cosmographe Introductio. And third, we're going to talk about how America got its name. Now, the map and the accompanying book were published in 1507 by a group called the Gymnasium Vosigenese in uh, St. Die, a small town in the Lorraine province, uh, today what's western France, up in the Vosges Mountains. Now, the map itself was published by a man named Martin Waldseemuller. The accompanying book, the Cosmographia Introductio, was published by a writer, a humanist writer, named uh, Matthias Ringman. Now, ultimately, the Gymnasium's purpose was to publish a revised version of Ptolemy's Geography. Now, Ptolemy's Geography was a book uh, that detailed all of the known lands. Uh, of course, this was all in Ptolemy's time, so uh, for 15, uh, 1507, it was becoming somewhat out of date, especially with all the discoveries being made across the Atlantic and uh, around Africa and Asia. So the gymnasium felt that an updated version would be very much in order. Now, the group itself, the gymnasium, was under the patronage of the local ruler, uh, Duke René. And uh, most of the information that they gleaned uh, that they eventually would put into the map and the book itself uh, was taken from René's sources. Now, René was a very illustrious person, especially given the materials he could come up with. And two particular pieces of source material that the gymnasium borrowed from René are a, sp a special note. One is a, a copy of a marine chart. Now, charts in those days were very highly guarded, especially by the governments that uh, commissioned them. And the chart that the uh, gymnasium used to publish their map was uh, most likely a copy of what was referred to as the Caverio chart, which was published in 1504-1505, uh, to show all of the newly discovered lands uh, by the Portuguese government, including uh, the New World, uh, the New Coastline, uh, included a lot of uh, present-day Brazil, South America, as well as a lot of uh, very detailed study of Africa. Now, how René managed to get a copy of this chart, uh, we're, we're really not sure. Uh, charts were very highly guarded, they were very valuable, there was a lot of money at stake for the governments that commissioned these charts. Uh, so how uh, one ended up into private hands, uh, especially up in a place like Lorraine province, no one's really sure. Uh, but, uh, be that as it may, René did end up with a copy of it. Uh, and commissioning the gymnasium, uh, he uh, lent them uh, his copy and uh, ultimately proved a very valuable source of uh, material. Now the second piece of source material that the gymnasium had borrowed from René was a letter that René had received from the illustrious explorer Amerigo Vespucci. And the letter itself detailed four voyages that Vespucci had made to the New World and all of the uh, geographical uh, facts that Vespucci had come across, uh, all of the peoples that he had interacted with, all of the things that he had seen. Uh, René lent this copy of the letter to the gymnasium and they ultimately would use it as a very valuable piece of material in assembling their map. Uh, and They would actually ultimately republish the letter itself in their book, the Cosmographe Introductio. Now, in deference to their patron, and in seeking to glorify the famed explorer Vespucci himself, who was on such good terms with their patron, the gymnasium ultimately decided to name the new land America. As can be seen from the Cosmographe Introductio, they justify this by saying, Now, these parts of the Earth have been more extensively explored, uh, referring to uh, Africa, Asia, and Europe, and a fourth part has been discovered by Amerigo Vespucci, as will be set forth in what follows. Inasmuch as both Europe and Asia received their names from women, I see no reason why anyone should justly object to calling this part Amerge, i.e. the land of Amerigo, or America, after Amerigo its discoverer, a man of great ability. Its position and the customs of its inhabitants may be clearly understood from the four voyages of Amerigo, which are subjoined. There's only one problem with all of this. The letter was a fake! Now, the letter that René received, dated September 4th, 1504, uh, was written uh, in several other copies that we have uh, available to a man named Piero de Soderini, who was a Florentine, possibly of Amerigo Vespucci's acquaintance. Uh, how it ended up in Lorraine province? Well, the letter itself was being circulated. It was the uh, equivalent of a, a very... Uh, uh, swashbuckling travel novel of the day. Uh, so it's not surprising that it ended up uh, so far from Florence. However, what is surprising is that it's published in René's name. 
Uh, there are several theories as to how this could have happened. Either Rene or somebody that Rene knew uh, re uh, received a copy of the letter and in reprinting it and republishing it uh, decided to uh, give Rene's reputation a bit of a boost and put his name on the front of it instead of Soderini. Uh, the letter goes on to describe in detail how America, uh, uh, how Amerigo, uh, in writing to uh, the recipient of the letter, uh, calls to mind all of the times they had as boys and, and studying together and, and uh, various uh, tutors that they had, uh, of which Rene shared absolutely none with Amerigo. They probably never even knew each other. Uh, so it, it's uh, obvious that the letter was not, its exact, was not itself written to uh, Rene. Now, we said it was a forgery, not just misaddressed, uh, which is also true. Now, the letter goes on to describe four voyages that Vespucci had taken to the New World, and all of, which, all of it seems to be uh, very specifically aimed at glorifying Vespucci while at the same time taking Columbus's reputation down a notch. Um, the uh, four voyages that uh, are described belonged to Columbus, not Vespucci. Vespucci made two that we know of definitively, possibly a third, uh, but definitely not four. Uh, the fourth voyage, as described in the letter, uh, involves a shipwreck, uh, founding uh, of, of, a, of a new colony, leaving men behind to, to populate the colony, building of a fort, all of which happened on Columbus's voyages, not Vespucci. Uh, so it all seems very, uh, very designed, very targeted to glorify Vespucci at the expense of Columbus. Uh, thus, uh, it's uh, widely considered that the Soderini letter is uh, ultimately a forgery. Uh, ultimately, it's a difficult question because the letter itself also does include some uh, information from Vespucci's real voyages, so uh, it brings to light the, what's called the Vespucci problem, uh, which is how much of his writings are actually real, how much were fabricated, uh, and the problem is that we really don't know, and there's a lot of ongoing speculation about that. So the letter itself was a forgery, it winds up in St. Die, is published in Rene's name, and in seeking to give uh, glory to their patron, the gymnasium publishes uh, the letter uh, as being in Rene's name and ultimately calls the new land America. It didn't even cross their minds that the letter was a forgery. They just assumed that their illustrious patron had very good connections, and as a result of his being able to produce a very detailed marine chart of the new world, well, it's hard to argue with their logic. Now, Vespucci himself had died in 1512. Waldseemuller, by 1516, seems to realize that the Soderini letter was, uh, in fact, false, uh, and went back and seeked to, uh, in seeking to revise his uh, original uh, publications, uh, removed the name of America from any subsequent materials. Now, Ringman himself would die in 1513. Waldseemuller would go on to publish several more maps, notably uh, his Carta Marina, published in 1516, and I say notably because not only was it the last map he ever published, but he seems to go back and uh, recall his naming of the new land America. He would call North America the land of Cuba, or part of Asia, and South America he would refer to simply as Terra Novum, the new land, now, the northern part of which he would call the land of Pariah, and the southern part of which he would call Brasilia, or the land of parrots. So the question is, if the name was only in one map published by Waldseemuller in 1507, how did it catch on with such tenacity that even today we refer to it as America. Well, the answer lies a little bit in the purpose of the Waldseemuller map and the Cosmographia Introductio uh, to begin, uh, itself. They were meant to be teaching materials. Uh, a big part of the humanist philosophy was, was spreading the learning, sharing the learning. Uh, as a result, the Waldseemuller map covers a, a shockingly large 36 square feet. It's an enormous map. It was actually published in 12 sections. Uh, enormous woodcuts that would all be put together, uh, four by three, uh, to ultimately produce this absolutely massive map, which uh, is highly impractical for individual study. You can't even mount the thing on a wall, it's too big. So what was it used for? Now the map itself was published in a limited run, only a thousand copies. They were meant to be used for teaching, mounted in classrooms, uh, spread around to fellow humanist gymnasiums. Uh, ultimately the maps were used and abused, and it was thought that no copies of the original map had actually existed. We know that uh, we get the name America from the map itself because the book, the Cosmographia Introductio, was, uh, did survive. Uh, we had copies of, uh, of the book itself, as well as a copy of Globe Gores that uh, Waldseemuller had also published, uh, which uh, displayed the name America. But the map itself was uh, long lost. It was considered to, to be the holy grail of early cartography, uh, if you could find one. Ultimately, today, there is one copy. It sits in the Library of Congress. It was published uh, by the United States from Germany in uh, 2009. 
2007 uh, for $10 million, making it the most valuable map in history. It was found in Germany in 1907 by a Jesuit monk named Joseph Fischer, uh, who was looking for uh, old maps in a library uh, where he came across uh, a copy of the Waldseemuller map sewn into the binding of a book that had probably been opened since the mid-1500s. Now, this is a really abridged version of all of this stuff. This is kind of the Cliff Notes version of how America got its name and discussing the Cosmographia Introductio and the Universalis Cosmographia. Uh, I would very much recommend uh, additional study, additional reading uh, on the matter. It's a fascinating topic. I'm going to include some links to some books that I, I used uh, in construction of this video, used for references. Um, it's, it's something that I've read a lot about it, uh, recently. And uh, it's really just, it's a fascinating topic, so I would highly recommend looking into it if this video uh, interests you at all. Feel free uh, to ask questions, put them down in the comments below, I'll get back to you. Uh, also, if you have any other books uh, that you'd like to see uh, the stories behind, uh, feel free to suggest them too. You, as always, you can follow us on Twitter, at Bookworm History, for uh, occasional uh, historical tidbits, facts, uh, sometimes bookish, sometimes just random. Uh, but uh, feel free to follow us there, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.